Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my weekly screencasts where I'll be using R to analyze data that I've never seen before. As usual, my data set comes from the Tidy Tuesday Project, which is an awesome project run by the online R for Data Science learning community. So this week I'm going to discover what data we have to analyze. Turns out it's media franchise revenues. I don't even know what that means. I haven't seen any analysis of this data set yet. Does this mean things like the Marvel Universe and the um, James Bond and John Wick? Uh, may, yeah, maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm really I'm excited about this. I kind of I like uh, pop culture and um, things like the Marvel movies. So I'm excited to see what I can find from this. Oh, and it's cool. There's a uh, data is beautiful. Maybe I'll look later at how the post um, what the post did to graph this. Included the, there's a cleaning script. All right, but I'll take a look what data there is. As usual, I'm going to create a new RMD. Call it Media Franchise Revenues. And load the data. I'll also do Library Tidyverse. And Theme Set Theme Light. Here we go. There are 321 uh, franchise uh, rows in this observations of this data set, but I can already see that it's not one per franchise. It looks like it's one per franchise in revenue category. Okay, this is pretty fun. Uh, so we got Game of Thrones, and it's split across like um, looks like uh -huh. revenue. I wonder if that's oh, it must be in millions or billions. In billions, there it is. So, for example, Game of Thrones, it has, to, it has that $0.9 billion, uh, billion dollars and for the books and $4 billion, $4 billion for, tele for TV? Wow. Huh. Uh, and uh, it's, I know it's this mega phenomenon. But, all right, and then we have things like Aladdin in the box office, and then um, it looks like it doesn't include the newest film. It's all, all the animated film. Let's see. Maybe maybe it combines it with the, the newest films uh, in this same category. Angry Birds, all birds, all right. So we're seeing lots of things that that are split across some number of categories. Uh, we have things like creators that generally the um, we're probably not going to be able to get much from because it would probably only have very few exceptions, like probably some of the Marvel ones. It's unlikely that that the same creators or owners pop up multiple times. Eh, but it looks like it might happen sometimes. Like we have. Marvel Entertain Marvel shows up for Spider-Man, probably also for um, some other franchises. All right, let's take a let's take a look. Let's see. First, um, how many distinct franchises are we looking at? Distinct. Uh, looks like about a hundred. Change that to a count and a sort. None of them have more than seven categories. Spider-Man has the most. And let's see. Uh, that's a good thing to know. What if I said media franchises, how many, if I did distinct franchise but keep all equals true, so I'm keeping the whole row, how many have multi, uh, owners pop up across multiple tr franchises? Uh, that's a good thing to know, is that Walt Disney counts for eight of these hundred franchises. Um, I don't know what Shuisha is. Um, let's go ahead and filter for that. Next is DC, which is a, um, a, co a comic uh, company, and uh, here it is, equals owners. All right, and it looks like, I'm not familiar with this, maybe it's um, anime, it looks like this comics, manga, I'm not familiar with any with um, any of these franchises, uh, it looks like they all started in manga, uh, and um, let's see, here we go. Uh, and we have original um, media. So we might start with, I can create this, say, distinct distinct franchises. I'm going to create add zone table. This is me trying to understand the data a bit more and how varied it is. The 321 observations is one of the smaller data sets uh, that, that I've worked on here. And um, uh, here we go, uh, franchises. Small data sets that we've we've had in Tidy Tuesday, but it still is very rich and interesting um, observations and ways we can look at this. So if I look at our distinct franchises, in fact, let's see. Hmm. 
I might do it a little bit differently. I'm going to say franchises are my first one, and I'm going to say group by franchise and creators and all the ones that are um, that occur multiple times, which include original media. These are like distinct. Song of Ice and Fire is always original media novel. And year created and creators and owners. Uh, all, we can group by all of those. We can say category, the number of categories. We can also say the revenue, which is the sum of the revenue. And we can say most profitable. Sum of this revenue col column. Check this out. I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen this be trick before. But we can say revenue category, which uh, indexed by which dot max revenue. So that for this um for one of these columns that uh that has multiple like Song of Ice and Fire, it would say which is the maximum of these. Oh, it's item number four, uh, and then you'd get the maximum. Uh, oh um. Yes, so most profit. So it's not getting going to pull out four. Out of this one, it would pull out TV. I'm going to throw in an ungroup, otherwise, it'll still be grouped. So here's my franchises. And now I have 103 rows. I have all the metadata about them, like the like that um, Song of Ice and Fire was created by George R. R. Martin. And I learn that their most uh, profitable media was the novel. That was the novel. It occurs across, we have revenue across five categories, total five billion. So I can now, um, I'm going to work for a bit at the franchise level. I'm not going to split it up. So now I'm going to say franchise. Uh, let's see, we can say, what are the biggest franchises? Among these top bunch, I can see that Anpen Man uh, looks like $60 billion. Wow. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just really not familiar with manga. Um, yeah, then franchises. I can start with, but that's only in the first 10. I wonder how big Spider-Man, I bet, is quite big. Uh, I'm sure Superman's big too, but um, so I'm not sure what we're going to find here. Hello Kitty it was showing as the biggest franchise. Well, I would have guessed some, I should have thought of Star Wars. I would have guessed some of these, but a lot of them I wouldn't have. Oh, Pokemon makes a lot of sense. So, um, Ridge Revenue Cat, okay, yeah. So what I do is probably, we could probably graph this and we could say, um, we could, oh, oh, nope, I'm looking at the, oh, I'm looking at the combined media franchises. I just want the franchise level. My mistake. There, Pokemon wins. So Pokemon, uh, having got it, having counted for $90 billion of revenue, uh, the, mo the biggest source being the box office, that's one interesting case. So what we can show then is, uh, how am I going to graph this? I'd probably start with the top uh, 16 is a good start. And I'll say franchise, revenue, VM call, and I'll flip it. And I also need to order it. Here we go. And then I, I want to add some information like, what are the most profitable franchises? Are these of all time, can I say, um, oh, uh, all these that have grossed at least $4 billion. So yeah, we can say of all time. Uh, and uh, look at that. One thing this makes this is making me think is that um, I'm gonna need to break this down, not right, not for this graph, no, probably for this graph. What this makes me realize is Pokemon, I really want to know what are the biggest sources, are they games, are they something else? Uh, so this makes me think that I actually want to do this on the original data. This is not the world's easiest step. Here's what I'm doing. I'm going to... I'm going to semi-join it with the franchises data, top N16 by revenue. And I should call it, and franchise to make it super clear, I'm gonna call it total revenue. Uh, this is total revenue, so then I can say total revenue. Why am I semi-joining? That's a way of me saying, I want only the 16 that made the most money, 
and I want to say rev um, by franchise. And now I kept all 60 of the original rows, but I can actually graph this. Let's see. There's going to be a few differences here. Some of the most notable differences. One is that I'm going to be um, uh, reordering by the sum of them because I actually uh, cause we're adding them all up, and then I'm going to say fill equals revenue category. I also want to reorder the category by its sum because I probably want to include want there to be by. Uh, right now, book sales are on top, but maybe they won't be in a moment. Um, revenue category. I got this in reverse order. I can do descending, or I can just throw in a minus. Watch this. Here we go. This was the stacked bar plot I kind of had in mind. Hmm. This at least orders this in the order I like. It's kind of weird. All right, um, here's the story. I want this order. I want the biggest one, which it looks like is mer merchandising, licensing, and retail. Wow. This is showing something's up with this. This is really Android Man, almost, on Pen Man, almost everything was merchandising, licensing, retail. I mean, certainly maybe, um, but I'm curious about that. Filter, like I'm wondering if, if maybe I made a mistake somewhere in one of these steps. Yeah, this shows it as being, yep, basically all that tiny mountain box office. Totally, um, I just uh, didn't under don't necessarily understand how, how the, the category worked. All right, let me tell the story of what I'm trying to do. I want this order, the most, the most expensive on top, but I want the most, um, but I, I want the biggest categories all the way on the left here. I can get the biggest categories all the way on the left, by sorting in this order, but I now want to reverse the order of the legend. This is one of those things I always forget how to do. Uh, it might, I'm going to try one guess, scale fill, um, where scale fill discrete here? Can I say reverse equals true? Nope. Reverse order of legend. Uh, ggplot too. Google quickly. Guides. Oh, there it is. Guide legend reverse equals true. I was not going to remember that. Well, that's not. Oh. I pass it to. Really? Oh. Guides. I, I, I read this too quickly. I think this might be right. Nice. Nope, not nice. Remove this. Why is the order staying the same? Oh, I think I need to say fill equals guide legend. There we go. Okay, that took a couple steps, but now we learned about guides. And what I see is that Merchandising, legacy, retail makes up most of this, with the exception of the Marvel Universe. Most of the money comes from uh, the, the movies. Um, and uh, Jump Comics, most of it comes from comic, comic or manga. It's, manga, it's surprised me, and Pin Man somehow got mixed into licensing, merch, merch, licensing retail, even though it was manga originally. Um, curious to me. All right, so so this is... Um, but yeah, this is the the plot that I, that I um, was originally interested in. I could probably bring it up to 20 without any real trouble. And definitely interesting. We, we, learn, we learn a lot about it. Uh, and I can, I can uh, tweak this a little bit more. I might be interested, for example, in saying, before I do the reordering, I'll say franchise is, I want to combine a couple strings. I want to say, um, you know, I'll use the glue package for this. If you haven't used glue, glue is, if you're using lots of paste, well, glue is, a play, is the tidyverse version, and, and it makes some steps a little more convenient. Because um, what I can say is, I can say, I want a glue, I want the following string. I want the franchise, but then I want, in parentheses, the year. 
uh, not a year create the year created. So this the pipe. Notice I described this like with these these brackets, and now I get oh, uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter originally nineteen uh, slash Harry Potter nineteen ninety seven, and we see uh, the this kind of uh, breakdown of it. That's if I wanted to um to show what what each year was. I could have thrown in the original. Um, I could have also thrown in the original media, which is where is that? Original media. But I think that would have been it would the axis would have gotten way too big. I just want to show that I could have done it with a little extra bracket. It's not the app. It's not terrible. But I kind of liked the less cluttered version where I removed this. All right, that was one. Uh, that's one graph we can do based on um, franchises. Biggest franchise, biggest biggest franchises. These is my favorite. I really I like the Marvel universe. Um, I like Harry Potter a lot. I like Star Wars a lot. Um, I definitely like Winnie the Pooh a lot. All great stuff. All right. So what if I look at? Let's see. Back at the at the table. Um, let's see. Uh, looking at some things. Oh um oh I probably want to tidy this up a little bit more. Some of the things I want to do are add a um, labels scales dollar um, and I'll say y equals total equals revenue billions new billions pretty good um, and I really don't need an x-axis I already say um, franchise I already say franchise up here all right, this is a good. This is a pretty good graph. Um, uh, the purple being so big, it's not the most appealing gplot2 palette color, but it, it certainly works and communicates what I'm looking at. All right. Um, the other step I was looking at was look at a franchise level. Um, who like so we could break this down instead of by. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'd want to say, uh, what if I say, what are the most profitable owners? What owners um, have gotten the most out of these franchises? I could group by owners. Could I group? Should I group? No, I'm actually not quite going to group by owner. Actually, yeah. I'm going to group by owners because of this. I'm going to uh, add up total revenue. Oh, no. Um, owner total revenue is the sum of the total revenue column. And now, okay, now I can show the total revenue and then I can say for any own, I wanna filter for the owner total revenue is greater than 50 billion. Nope, that's too few, too few owners. 20 billion, I'm gonna start here because I'm gonna make a graph where I say uh, graph the owners by the total revenue, not the owner total revenue, and I was starting to say fill it with the franchise. I don't. Oh no, I know how. I know how how I um how I do it. Owner total. Here's what I do. I say owner total revenue. Owner franchises are n, and I want to say owner franchises greater than two. How many um o how many owners have more than one franchise? I can actually simplify this. I'm not going to use the owner total revenue. I do a lot of this kind of simplification where I want to say uh, include the groups that have a, a more than one. And I want to say, and here's where I'm going to uh, have the trick. I'm going to do some of this, this the same way, but I'm going to do a facet. Facet wrap by owner. And now I can say of all the owners by owners. Of all the owners that have more than one franchise, this is just wrong. Oops. I don't want owners. I want franchise. And I need scales equals free. This is going to be a free Y. And I want to throw in some reordering um, of a couple of steps of this. What I'm going to say is reorder franchise equals FCT reorder of franchise by the total revenue 
and the owners equals FCT reorder of the owners by the total revenue. I probably want that one descending. I'm messing with this a lot, but it's like, yeah, owners reorder by total revenue. I'm gonna do by throwing a minus sign here, and we can see like which owner would you most like to be from a from a franchise perspective. This, hmm, something's up because I would have expected Nintendo. Oh, that's the problem. I wanted to order my facets. I wanted to have the the be the biggest up here in the upper left. So my question is, why is Walt Disney not on the upper left here? And the answer is because I didn't reorder, but I didn't do reorder by sum. I want to reorder by the, um, not the, the average, but the sum. There it is. So now I can say, ah, um, Walt Disney has made hundreds of billions of dollars off of um, a combination of its, uh, of its categories. And that doesn't even count Marvel, which um, is within Walt, uh, Walt Disney. Um, go. Uh, it's, it's in the last uh, decade or, so, or last, I'm not sure, five, six years, seven years. Uh, but here, so here I have each of the categories. You can see like, ah, so DC made lots of money. All these made uh, plenty of money. And I can still break this down. That's great. I can actually do the same thing I did before where I say, let's reorder our revenue categories. Let's fill by revenue category. Um, I'm missing something. Oh, I'm working in aggregate. Oh, I don't have to. Okay, uh, I'm doing, uh, here, here it is. I wanted to separate it by the, the type, but I can do it this way. I can say, look at all the media franchises. Instead of filtering for uh, there's at least one row, I say there's at least one, there's at more than one franchise. And now, a lot of the rest of this just falls into place. The, the GM call is naturally stacked. The revenue categories are filled and ordered. Go, total revenue, and instead of total revenue, it's called revenue. A lot of this falls into place. It's very important to keep in mind when I'm working on this. Am I thinking at the franchise level or the, uh, at, at the franchise category level, which this is, or, um, What level am I thinking? At this point, it's actually rather similar to the other um, visualization. The problem is I'm, I've i got something uh, still wrong here. Uh, yeah, something's not being ordered. Oh, here it is. And I'm still getting one step wrong. Owners, revenue... Oh, no, I'm, I'm not sure why I thought that. Uh, yeah, with a legend, this becomes a bit of a, a bit much of a graph. Uh, how many own more than two franchises? Maybe I'll keep, stick it to that, uh, stick to that graph. This graph was too crowded. All right, so I can say, who are the franchise super owners? Uh, and um, these are the ones that own at least three. Um, and now it can add a couple other steps that I grabbed from this one. Mostly, which, what owners own at least three franchises? Uh, and then I can throw in, let's see, I throw in a reverse. This is all just about working with our various levels of categories. Here we go. And now we have another visualization where we can see some things about this. We can see that um, sh Shuisa um, um, uh, Shui 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 um, is mostly out of comics and manga. And then, um, and whereas Walt Disney and DC, most of it comes out of merchandise, licensing, and retail. Uh, and um, though DC gets plenty out of the box office, uh, and there are three things that they, that they own, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look at. Well, I could look at creators, but I. I don't know how many are gonna have multiple for the same one. 
some are uh, I think like uh, maybe Stan Lee has multiple who uh, from Marvel has multiple here the count owners sort equals true this is on the 103 then oh not owners creators only Keith Chapman I don't know who that is and American greetings I don't really know what that is um, Uh, Keith Chapman created Paw Patrol and I think it's a children's show and Bob the Builder, two children's shows and uh, I don't know what yeah, it's probably not it's, so it's not quite worth looking at a creator level just because it doesn't combine enough um, enough um, uh, of these categories together. These franchises uh, do. Uh, these, fran these owners do. So these are two graphs we created that show what the most profitable companies are. Uh, co franchises and most profitable com companies are. All right, that's something solid. Let's ask a couple more questions. Wow, I have not saved in a minute. And save now. All right, let's ask questions about... <clears throat> hmm, I'm, I'm interested in a few things. I'm interested in... Uh, well, let's, let's try a visualization based on year. Year, year, year created. I'm thinking about how to um, to show that. The way that I might do it would be look at our friend. Anything based on year is going to have to be um, on the 103 level, and I'll say year created and uh, total revenue. Uh, let's see, total revenue. And it's always nice to say this is not necessary, it doesn't provide new information, but I can say size of the total revenue and then throw in a um, geome text label equals um, franchise, check overlap equals true. I want size to affect only the points. I was thinking of, of waste ways we can make kind of a, uh, and always nice on this is to adjust it, V just and H just move it on the vertical and horizontal axes. And here's some here's some um, some things we learned like what are the big franchises? Notice the size is kind of is redundant with the um, y axis, but let's see. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about other ways we could um, we could. Visualize this. That's prob problems we have. A, we have a crowd of all the new franchises that didn't make a lot of money, but it's not a big deal if we don't know which those, um, what those are. Uh, what? Let's see. And this would be a graph, something like. I'm not going to spend too long. What? When were the great franchises created? Usually, when I have a V just and H just, I often need like an expand limits x equals. I don't know, 1900, to make sure it doesn't go off the left side of the screen. That's pretty good. Um, and we see where the, um, yeah, we see where all the, I do not need a, um, a, a, a legend in this one. Theme legend position equals none. Uh, and we see some, some, I learned some things. I learned Pokemon is remarkable for being both the both both the most money making franchise and one that's relatively recent. Um, Winnie the Pooh and Mickey Mouse are your your old school Disney um, mega hits. Uh, well, Winnie the Pooh was originally um, a children's book, but my understanding, Bob writes bought by Disney, and um, you also see this like golden age of like Hello Kitty and Star Wars and and the Man. I'm really not familiar with. I, it's a, oh, okay, it's a super, it's a superhero, uh, series, I just wasn't, I'm not that familiar with, um, uh, with Japanese work, so, um, uh, yeah, so this, these are some things we, um, uh, these are some things we learned about these franchises, so this is as much as I can kind of do at this level, uh, in terms of looking at individual franchises, I tried looking at the biggest ones, I try I looked at, um, them by, what companies own multiple franchises, and I looked at when the franchises were created. 
there's kind of one there's one column I haven't really used and that's the column of original media and there's a lot that I can I can think about here one is like what is the what I'm, here's what I'm thinking about what is the journey from original media to where money gets made uh, what do I mean by that what I mean is that um something like a novel I, uh, I or a comic book I would ex actually I, let me take it back something like a novel I'd expect most of the money then to be in a TV show or a box office I might not expect the money to be in merchandise eh, but that's not quite true to Harry Potter but um, for something like a like video game, I expect most of the money was made through the video games. Uh, there aren't a ton of like I can't at least I can't think of a video game franchise where most of the money was made in the movies. Um, so I'm actually I'm going to think wonder about original media to to, um, uh, to the total to the 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 revenue made. So what if I said think of ways to do this. I could start with group by the original media and the, I don't want to look, I want to look at the media franchises type. Ooh, this just hit me. I neglected to mention this before, but I probably want to do color equals um, original media. And then I can say, do this a little bit differently. I can say guides now I'm starting to remember size something like this oof that is too many categories and my size thing didn't work maybe it's legend equals false Uh, I'm trying to remember how to remove just size. Guide, legend. Nope, still not working. I've still got size here. Yeah. I'm not going to work harder at, at getting rid of that. Um, uh, yeah, we have a lot of types of original media we're seeing here. Uh, but let's let's go back to what I was what I was thinking about original media and revenue category. I can group by and sum what's the total revenue. It's going to be biased towards your big categories, but I'm going to start with that, and then I can say like, of things that started as animated cartoons, less than a billion across all of these, less than a billion ended up being um, uh, dollars were made through um, in the box office, but loads of money ended up in merchandise, licensing, retail. Uh, okay, so now I'm wondering what are the biggest sources from the original media? Uh, and I can start that just by, I'm curious, look at it myself and say group by original media, by oops, original media, summarize revenue equals sum of revenue. And wow, from, it started as a greeting card. Look at that. Maybe that was the Care Bears. Uh, Revenue. Imagine making nine billion dollars off of what starts as a greeting card. Way to go! Um, yeah, so so we can see like the biggest sources originally were things that started as video games or manga, um, but where did they end up? Is kind of what I'm going for. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say group by original media. Filter for the sum of the revenue is at least ninety billion. That'll keep nine of these. Uh, Add an extra step here. I'll keep the original media I'm interested in, and say where what original media ended up in what revenue categories. So I can say graph the revenue category. I don't need to summarize; it'll it'll um add it up itself, and say graph the re regular. Ca um, I'm doing lots of bar plots today. I don't quite have more creative ideas. Uh, than a box plot on this. What I'd say is revenue category and revenue and facet wrap by original media. I'm going to skip the free scales for now. All right. Uh, here's a pattern that I was kind of looking for. Of, thing, of franchises that started as video games, most of the money ended up being made in video games. Um, and 
what I, I need to do a little bit more reordering. Revenue category by revenue sum, I want the totals. And I need to ungroup any time I do like a reorder like that. All right, what this is showing is, um, this is a variation where I could say most of the money from this original media became this type of, of revenue. Uh, and Y is category, X is revenue, billions, and uh, throw in a quick scale. I like to tidy up a little bit as I go. Don't always, uh, don't really have to, but scales percent. Oh, nope, I said percent, I meant dollar. All right, uh, what I'm then saying is, oh, let's do one more reorder. I wanna reorder these facets. Right now they're alphabetical, animated to video game. I don't like that as much. I want original media to be reordered by original media, loads of reordering and summarizing and filtering today. So it's big when you work with a table like, all those are important when you work with a table like this. and. By revenue, by sum, minus, so it's descending with video game on the top left, yeah. Can I add a few more categories to this? I could. Um, what other original categories are there? There's, uh, I could try make the threshold 80, how many facets does that end up with? I'm kind of trying to aim for a nice number of facets. Uh, what if I made 75? There are other ways to do this. They just, they aren't all that much more elegant. And 50. Uh, this is a data, this is a data scientist at work trying to bring a number down. That's what I was aiming for. I wanted to get 12 categories. I like how this looks. Um, what I wanted to say was, uh, what we're learning here is, video games make money in video games. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, everything makes some money from merchandising. Books, almost all the money ends up being from merchandising. That's actually, wait, there's book and there's novel. Well, that's not confusing at all. Um, hmm. And uh, cartoon characters, it's always from the merchandise licensing retail. That could be relatively few um, uh, franchises. Uh, and this kind of what we're learning is like there's, there's particular profiles. Novels can end up anywhere. I bet you book is, I bet you this is like Harry Potter. I know Harry Potter would have a higher box office, so I'm not sure. Um, so this is what kinds of media, what kinds of media lead to what types of revenue? And, uh, oops, I neglected to, here it is, that the cohorts got flipped. All right, so this is then showing, mm -hmm. all right, so this is showing, like, things, something that started as a film tends to have gotten a lot of its money out of box office, but also just, maybe just as much out of merchandising, licensing, retail. Um, manga is some combination of home video entertainment and merchandise. Animated series, it's usually all about the merchandise. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so these are th some um, things we learned in terms of the typical breakdown, the kind of footprint of each of these types of original media. I'm going to share that, uh, I'm going to share a different way of showing this graph. I kind of like the fascinating bar plot. It really lets me kind of read through this. But you notice there's like so much, so much empty space here. Um, and there's an alternative way we could do this, which is a geom tile, also known as a heat, uh, a heat map. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say uh, media, I'm going to say, hmm. I'm going to do this a little bit, a tiny bit differently, and I'm going to say summer um, group by original media and, because uh, I'm trying to make both graphs at once, 
and um, revenue category. Summarize revenue equals sum of revenue. And I call this original category, original media categories. Original media revenue categories, very wordy, but I wanted to show that's what the two sides of this show. This shows this original media, this revenue category. And I'm gonna throw in all the mutates that I want right here, but I'm gonna need a, an ungroup first. Why did I reorganize that way? Because I can still make this graph, am I right? Yes. This is one visualization. Uh, it lets me very precisely see comic manga has slightly out, outdoes merchandising licensing retail. But there's, as I said, there's a lot of empty space here. There's an, here's another visualization we could, we could take. We take original media categories. Fundamentally, it's category one, category two, and some numeric value. And we say, put original media on the x-axis. Put revenue category on the y-axis, fill equals revenue, and we do a geom tile. So I'm going to change the scale in a second, but notice this is kind of similar. There we had facets, and here we have um, uh, just uh, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. Um, but and yeah, it shows some some uh, some similar things. It shows that everyone makes some money off merchandising, licensing, retail. I don't. Uh, completely love this whole um, the the dark blue to light blue scale. I can do scale Y gradient scale sorry color gradient fill gradient even better to gradient two. I like gradient two and say low equals blue low equals white high equals red. Give that a shot. Hmm, it's not so bad. Uh, what this shows is where is all the money coming in. And uh, there's a few ways I can um, notice I've got all these blank spaces. If I drop the, the, um, the, ac the grid lines, the panel grid lines, which is not that hard, then the white basically blends into this white and we don't really need to do anything uh, else with it. That seems like a reasonable panel grid equals element blank. That's the way that I rem remove these background lines. So this is a, a solid way of visualizing this. All right. So one of the ch one of the problems of a graph like this is that we notice for some of the rarer categories or some of the rarer original media. I want to flip the x and y axes. I'm looking at this. I just I want to. It's the same information, but if I take this, if I flip these two, it feels like I can say where does this one make money and read across it. I do need to to flip one of the scales. I can actually do that. I need to say scale x reverse is actually a handy way to just say without changing the actual. Oh, no, I was wrong. That can't be applied to uh, factors. Okay, good to know. Um, I can I can redo the reorder. I can say um, revenue category revenue category equals. FCT reorder revenue category by revenue sum and I'm doing it by positive revenue oh, by negative revenue this time. Oh, that just took a minute. I wanted to change this so the biggest ones go on the left. Uh, I kind of like this. What it shows is it still shows everything makes money. I probably also I want to reverse both of them. That's a little bit frustrating because I went to all this trouble to order them in the first place. Mm. Uh, you live, you learn. And I do, here it is. Flip these two. Oh, I just remembered. I can do this a little bit more easily. There's a function called X, S, uh, uh, FCT rev for reversing. I want to reverse these two categories. That's way better. Uh, we notice the facets just need to be in a different order than um, these than this does to be meaningful. I like to big ones to be on the left and the top. So this is how we see that video games. This one I'm gonna need. There's one more trick. Notice how these are all overlapping each other. Throw in a 
in the theme, throw in an axis, text x equals element, text angle equals 90, it's just one. This is a way, I've just done this, I, don't, I just have it memorized because I've done it so many times. We, um, this is a way we, re, we reorient the text. So this is an alternative visualization. See so the video games, most of the money comes from the video games. Manga, most of it comes from comic or manga, makes sense. And we work our way down from, uh, from there. All right. There's a few other things we can do. We can throw in a labels equals scales dollar onto the um, the fill axis and say revenue billions here. There's more. We could add more axes and such. I'm not quite going to do it. It's not as important. But this shows... Um, this just shows... Here's one visualization. We say where does each of these um, media make their money? This shows another one. Um, and I think that each of them, I think, has kind of their own advantages. Um, I kind of like that I, here I can see the details, even of the relatively small amounts. But, um, yeah, your mileage may, uh, may vary, and we, we saw how to make a faceted bar plot or a heat map today. All right. That's it for the inspiration I have for this data set. Um, I'm interested in what was the... Before we go, I'm going to find out what was the Data is Beautiful post. How did they choose to look at it? Okay, actually very similar to the way I did. They used a very different theme, but notice very similar to the way I did. Oh, in fact, wow, even did the year uh, in this um, in this graph. Yeah, uh, you can really get a lot of on, um, on Data is Beautiful. I, I, and I mean it very in a very positive way. A graph doesn't need to be incredibly... Um, fancy in terms of its aesthetics, in terms of its components, for it to show something really meaningful. Uh, here, it, it's um, people might not have guessed that Hello Kitty has outgrossed Star Wars, um, and we learned something from this graph, and we learned something very similar with this one, uh, with, with the one that we created. I'm going to show the one we created. There's something I like that the author of this one uh, did. Do we have, um, do we have any... Uh, any credit from the author, uh, the author's name, I don't know, but um, we, uh, something I like that the author did was um, add this text next to each bar. I'm going to quickly show how to do that. Uh, what I did is, most profitable franchise of all time. I promise I hadn't seen it before I did the graph. It's really quite similar. Um, what we can do is add in a geom text. AES label equals, we, the text that we need to show is actually the Revenue. Oh, this is fun. I need to. I need to actually do one more step. Uh, I'd already done the franchise aggregation here. Um, so here's what I do. I say top franchises, and I bring out the top n. Remember, fr I've, I've yet to spell that correctly on the first try. Here's my top franchises. Semi join, and also do a geom text. AS label is going to be the amount of money, the total revenue. And the data is critical, is going to be separate. The data for the this layer needs to be the total, the top franchises uh, level. I'm going to show a quick cha a change or two that we're going to make. Oh. Uh-huh. It's called total revenue. Oh, I see. Okay. I need to... Yeah. Y equals total revenue. I needed to replace the Y level. I also need the fill to occur at the GM call layer. Notice I'm combining data sets, so I need to be very careful about what levels have what uh, fields. And oh, look, look at me getting um, this completely wrong. Uh, oh, I see it. I need to rename the franchise at an earlier step. So I need to... The problem is that that year was kind of messing with everything. I'm not going to do it at the earlier step. I'm just going to do it twice. And please forgive me for that. Franchise. Uh, and, uh, oh, here it is. I need to do the mutate before the semi-join, because otherwise it won't know how to combine them. Ah, there we go. We're very close now. 
Now what I'll do is add in, um, is say, label is scales dollar of, of this, but I'm also gonna, I'm also gonna round it. Accuracy zero, I think. We'll say, oops, doesn't like that at all. I don't like the sense, so I say accuracy. Here it is. I don't actually remember what accuracy, uh, me what how to interpret it, but I can say, here we go. Uh, I can say total revenue. Uh, notice I'm, I'm filling in a lot here in this step, uh, well, uh, but I'll say, throw in an extra paste, this and a B. I liked how it showed billions. I mean, uh, oop, oop. What did I do wrong? This is good. Yeah, I don't know what it would, would happen in that one step. What I'm doing is I'm now adding in the dollars to each, and I'll do an adjustment. I'll say a horizontal adjustment. I need it. I want it to be after this step, and say zoom out a little. I feel like I've had a hard time seeing the code. I'll say h just equals one. Nope, it's just going to have to be a uh, zero. No, minus. Yeah, zero is right. Here it is. And now I can see that like um, I need a little bit more space. There's more I could do to tidy this up, uh, but I'm going to do add a little bit of space. I'm going to say, notice that that nine, I don't like this. Polish, 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 polish. Expand limits y equals 100 billion uh, to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, and then that's a little better. And what was the other the other one thing I want to do is oh, I, I think we have too many grid lines. So I'm going to add in uh, theme uh, panel grid X. That's I don't like the horizontal grid lines. It doesn't feel like they're meaningful at all. And they make it harder to read the numbers. So I'm going to say panel grid X is element blank. That That's the at least horizontal. The, major major X and maybe it was minor X it looks like it was both I think I need to say major and minor I did X but that that's very actually that's actually really interesting I did not realize that the coword flip, I need to keep it Y. There we go. I can just say major Y, but I have to use Y because it's already been coword flipped. I'd thought of it as the X aesthetic. That took a couple of tries, but now I learn panel grid major Y is going to be, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, there's a thing I can do to get rid of this empty space. I cannot remember what it is. It's expand or something. Um, Yep, can't remember. There's a lot more polishing that could be done, but um, I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, they used um, an extra decimal point, that, uh, and they used a special theme. Mostly, like, yeah, this, um, this gets most of the way in terms of the same information, and I think it is definitely an interesting plot. Like, I learned a lot today from these visualizations. All right, so to review, we did a couple of bar plots was interested in the most profitable franchises. I was interested in what companies own the most. I did a little bit without polishing as when were these great franchises created. So like kind of 70s, some classic kind of Disney adjacent ones. And then I looked a little at two, at two ways of answering the question, what kinds of media lead to which types of revenue, both a faceted bar plot and a heat map with geom tile. All right. That's uh, that's it for today. I um, hope you had a great time. I certainly did. I'll see. You